Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. We've got a very serious broadcast this evening going to be sharing with you. Uh, and a lot of the uh, news links and things that I have up on the screen are not necessarily uh, what I am covering as more of a prop. So just please keep that in mind. Uh, as we have right here, Russian warship with uh, unstoppable 7,000 mile per hour hypersonic missile sails towards U.S. and will soon be in strike range. Of course, this was January 24th, 2023. Thing is, is right now both Russian and Chinese warships are in international waters right on the very edge of territorial waters of the United States. I was getting this information uh, from Washington last night, and they are all nuclear armed, equipped, and ready for action. Uh, the situation is very dire. We're going to be talking tonight about three possible fronts all breaking out this year, including both NATO and Russia over in Ukraine, which really and truly it's already the case going on there. We're talking about next China, Taiwan. Uh, China is only waiting for us to get completely embroiled into the situation with Ukraine, deplete as much of our assets as possible before they take down Taiwan. And then, of course, we have Biden has committed with Israel that they would go at war with Iran. Uh, as I reported last night, uh, Israel was using, they went in with three drones to make strikes deep inside of Iran. One of those drones did hit its target. The other two were shot down. I believe it was more a testing ground for Israel. And we're going to get into that information tonight as well, as well as the technology that Russia is using inside of Ukraine. What's really happening? Tens of thousands of soldiers have been killed and are being killed. Russia is making major advances, and now all these tanks being poured into the country is going to be for a NATO offensive to try to retake and push Russia back. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to play a little clip here I did with Murad Gazdiev. Uh, and before I get into that, I just want to share with you guys so that you're aware of, too, we are... We're back on our Twitter page there, uh, Twitter page there, and, and by the way, they're constantly blocking me. It doesn't matter where I'm at, I'm getting blocked constantly. But Israeli News Live at Stephen Dinoon, using the name that I write books in. I wrote the book, Israel, Are They Still God's People, and Yam Suf. Working on a third book right now, What Have Rabbis Missed? Uh, so hopefully I'll have that book finished here in a couple of months. <clears throat> but anyway, it's Israeli News Live at Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, Dinun, D-E-N-O-O-N. -O -O uh, we have a lot of people that follow us over there, close to 9,000 followers. We've been down for about a year. Count got hacked, all that kind of good stuff there, but we're finally back up and running. So we will be sharing there. Also, too, not very familiar with how to use uh, Telegram as of yet, but we are now on Telegram. We created a channel called Israeli News Live. There's more than one on there. So make sure it's got my old ugly mug here with my little green shirt there on. Then you know you're on the right one there. Got to thank Brother um, uh, Roddy, uh, not Roddy, but Brother Anthony uh, for sharing that. Got 154 people already following us there. But you can follow us here on Telegram, be uploading there as well. Uh, so just don't want to waste any more time on that. But let's get right down to what's going on. Biden basically shooting us in the foot. Um, you guys already know, and let me just see if it's still showing on here. Uh, I had this up here on Twitter here. I'm going to play this one little clip here before I kind of comment on these things here. So let's listen into this uh, broadcast right here. Uh, they have more firepower, better communications, uh, better defensive capabilities. So this is something. Talking about the Ukraine tanks from Germany. Really been desperate to get its hands on the Leopard uh, again, 2. Again, those Abrams tanks, those M1 Abrams tanks that the U.S. has. The Pentagon for weeks has been saying, "Look, this is just not the right fit. They are complicated. They are expensive. It's really hard to train people on those." Uh, but by saying. Yeah, we'll probably do that. We'll probably send those Abrams tanks to the Germans. They've said, okay, we'll send them as well. It's it's more like it's this allied support uh, that Germany needed. So the State Department and the White House were, were really going back at the Pentagon saying, look, can't we get some over there? But again, it will probably take a year, a year before they get those tanks over there. 
Uh, Russia is uh, more than likely to launch a spring assault in Ukraine. That's one of the reasons Ukraine really wanted those tanks. And well, I hate to disappoint you guys, but uh, the truth of the matter is Ukraine doesn't know how and neither will we be able to train Ukraine on how to actually run those tanks, even on the tanks that Germany is sending. Uh, it says Ukraine tank crews have arrived in the UK to begin training for their continued fight for against Russia. The UK will provide Challenger 2 tanks to Ukraine alongside global partner nations, demonstrating the strength and support for Ukraine internationally. Well, yeah, they're going there to get trained on it, but in the meantime, guess what? It's going to be German uh, tank uh, uh, brigades. It's going to take U.S. Uh, tank uh, 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 battalions there in order to run the Abrams 1. This is something I was already told that was going to happen. And as the lady pointed out on there, she said, you know, the Abrams tank really, the uh, Pentagon is saying it's not the right fit. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. And I'm going to tell you what the real reasons are behind it. Well, Biden got this bright idea that he was going to take and um, while oil prices were high, take and sell our military oil reserves uh, uh, and, and then turn around and then buy it back when the oil went down low. Well, he did exactly that. He sold off uh, a lot of the military oil reserves. Now, what does that matter? Because the, what he sold off is the very uh, diesel fuel that is uh, a hybrid fuel mixed with kind of like a, 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 a jet fighter fuel together that the Abrams tanks actually run on. So we're sending the Abrams one over to the uh, Ukraine theater, but we don't have the right fuel. They will run on diesel, but you have to understand these Abrams one tanks are designed for this hybrid fuel, which makes them run at about 55 miles per hour, fastest tank on the planet. Right, but with the wrong fuel in it, with only diesel, which it's not really the wrong, it just heck makes it a heck of a lot slower at about 35 miles per hour. So you lose about 15 to 20 miles per hour. It can maybe get up to top speed of 40, possibly if you really push it. And of course, the other thing is the Abrams one is a majorly heavy, heavy, heavy tank. And there's a great concern that the soft lands, uh, of the fertile lands, as they call it, of Ukraine, that we're going to get bogged down over there and get stuck. Not to mention, it is a super high maintenance vehicle. Even when it's fully functional and operational, they break down quite frequently. And again, there's just no way to find the time to train Ukrainians to run these tanks at this time. So we would have to send our own battalions there to be able to run, tank battalions to run the tanks. Well, that puts the United States in direct combat with Russia. That's not a good situation. And don't think that Russia doesn't know it as well. Speaking of Russia... There's something I was actually trying to pull up here. Maybe I can just pull it up by going straight to the web here. Uh, uh, the Russia using drones over in uh, Ukraine there. Russia has a AI technology that is just really superior to anything else that's out there. And uh, what I wanted to be able to show you here, let me just see if I can find here. Um, uh, gosh, trying to find the right thing there. Uh that Russia is doing, uh, well, that's not even available. Oh, well, so I uh, want to just be able to give you something we could look at here. Um, but the thing is, is Russia has a AI technology and the uh, AI uh, technology uh, that Russia has uh, with their drones uh, is that uh, they are able to, um, well, I can't get nothing to pull up on that, so we'll just kind of drop it for right now. Let me drop back over here, back to the Russian ships. We're going to get into that here in just a little bit. The AI technology that Russia uses is they're able to detect with a drone flying overhead whether or not, uh, you know, is this uh, the enemy or is it civilian targets down below? It can identify even the types of military equipment, whether it be American, German, French, whatever the case may be, and can even identify the types of soldiers on the ground. Are they American soldiers? Are they German? Or are they uh, Latvia, Lithuania? They can determine any of that. And in fact, the drones also carry kind of like a, a, a dirty bomb on board. So if they need to, they can take out the target instantly below. And if they decide that the target is bigger than that, they even have a, 
a tracking device that it can be shot off that drone and go right down and the people that are on the ground wouldn't even know a tracking device was deployed right in the, their very midst. That tracking device allows Russia then to use the super hypersonic missiles that they have to come in and destroy the target. This is the type of technology Russia is using inside of Ukraine. In fact, I was told Ukraine has become a testing ground uh, to see just who has what. The United States, uh, NATO, and their al the allies there are trying to get Russia to pull out their big guns and show everything that they're using. And at the same time, Russia is trying to do that with the United States, NATO, uh, to get them to put all their cards on the table. And of course, Russia and China are sharing that technology. China needs the technology because why? China is pr planning on taking Taiwan just as soon as they figure we're in so embroiled with Ukraine and Russia there and we're being depleted enough, that's when China plans to pounce on Taiwan. That's exactly what I've been told. Uh, so the whole situation, like I said, it is certainly ramping up. Now I have up here uh, this article here from January the 24th of 2023. Of course, today is uh, January the 29th, 2023, just five days ago. These Russian ships, what it says here, has the unstoppable 7,000 mile per hour hypersonic missile sails towards U.S. and will soon be in, in strike range. They are. Not only is Russia's ships in strike range, so is China has warships, international waters right on the edge of our territorial waters. And we know from our intel that they are all nuclear armed, ready and capable of launching nuclear missiles on the mainland United States. That is a fact, not even a fantasy there. Um, uh, so anyway, here, let me just look here at some of my notes here. Uh, so uh, another thing I'll, I'll mention that I think is very important to, to bring out as well. Good friend of mine, uh, I won't say who he is, but uh, he shared some very interesting uh, perspective of, of his own there. And he said one thing that Russia has learned is that after Afghanistan and eight years of being bogged down in that war, depleted Russia of a lot of its own armaments. Russia had to restock after Afghanistan, but they really got depleted majorly. And they said, he said that Putin will not make that mistake when it comes to Ukraine. Putin, as he said, and even Washington said, has taken the gloves off. Putin is not playing games. He is using the hypersonic missiles, as we've already seen multiple times inside of Ukraine. Uh, this is no game whatsoever for him, and he is getting very serious. I've also been told by Washington that Russia is making major advances in Ukraine. They are pushing Ukrainian troops back and of course, Ukrainian troops are very well embedded. I actually recorded a little bit of Murad Gazdiev. Murad Gazdiev has been, uh, he's a journalist, uh, Russian journalist there for RT. Uh, he's been in all kinds of frontline theaters. We've corresponded back and forth with Murad on multiple occasions there. Uh, an amazing journalist. Uh, and I find him to be a very honest, very truthful journalist there. He was inside of Ukraine on the front lines, and I want you to see just what he shares there. Now, the audio is pretty weak on this, so uh, let's just try to listen in the best we can. Hopefully, we'll be able to pick up Murad a little bit better. Bunkers are everywhere, built over the last eight years by the Ukrainian military, uh, built in completely uh, nondescript places above us is, is just a small family home, a private residence, and downstairs was an arms store and a barracks for Ukrainian soldiers. Power is rationed. Food, water, ammo, and fuel are carried for miles before they get here. Nothing is wasted. In the early hours of the morning, we woke up to what fighters here call an approximation of hell. A deafening cacophony of blasts and explosions, pure and utter violence without end. All of this footage we filmed in mere hours. Even phosphorus being used.
high up the hill of the battleground. This, the entire area covered in smoke is where Ukrainian positions are. Two, three hundred meters away from us currently Russian artillery of all sorts and colors, mortars, howitzers, as well as aircraft, tanks. I'm being actually told that Ukrainian troops are dying in the tens of thousands over there. No doubt Russian troops as well. Uh, as you can see, the pounding, I mean, this city is a total disaster. Uh, I'd already heard this from another uh, source that I had that actually monitors the drones that are going over into Ukraine there. So it is, uh, Ukraine the, is just totally unbelievable right at this point here. Another thing that was uh, shared with me when it comes to Ukraine is that um, uh, analysts in Washington believe that unless NATO can really make some kind of major difference in a very short period of time, that Ukraine will fall within the next 30 days, that they would not be able to survive much more than 30 days on this battlefront going in. Uh, we are also, uh, let's see, oh gosh, I want to kind of pick up some other things too to share with you. Um, I, I was asked also about uh, Russia and uh, whether or not President Putin has uh, ordered people to go to their bunkers because there is still a great fear of a nuclear war inside of this area there. And uh, I, it was confirmed to me, I'd gotten that from uh, one of my FEMA engineers there, but uh, it was confirmed to me that indeed Russia has told not the civilians themselves, but the elite and the business people uh, that they should go ahead and start considering going underground for the next three months. There's a great risk of nuclear war. Uh, I've even been told unofficially that there is a great concern that Germany could get hit with a nuclear device. And now that we see under this Twitter uh, feed that I shared with you a moment ago there, Britain getting involved uh, and also sending tanks over there, uh, Russia already, uh, there is a threat of nuclear war with Great Britain. Uh, Putin definitely not playing games, friends. It is extremely serious. And the Washington Examiner putting out this, the new grid threat Russia deploys first strike weapon in China ready to. Wanted to share this with you. The United States waking up to the, th uh, the threat posed to the electric grid and electronics from cyber warfare. Russia's mastering systems that can already overcome the latest protections to keep the lights on, according to one of the nation's leading experts. The latest intelligence indicate that Russia has specialized a super electric magnetic pulse weapon and warhead capable of traveling at Mach 20 that could put the U.S. in the dark with little notice. Uh, Peter Vincent, uh, Pry Executive Director of the EMP Task Force on National and Homeland Security, also said China has leapfrogged U.S. developments in electric magnetic pulse warfare. What's more, administration critics claim that President Biden's decision to lift former President Trump's ban on China involvement in the U.S. grid gives the communist foe backdoor opening to attacking the nation's electric supply. I say that, and of course, I don't want to spend any time on it, but don't forget EMP Shield. Something you want to get for your house with the types of threats like that. They even have this little micro one that they just came out with. I know quite a bit more about that. Can't really say much about it. But uh, don't forget when you buy an EMP shield from, uh, for, you know, all you got to do is click on it there. When you go over there, you add that to your cart there. And don't forget your INL50 coupon code there. Go to the cart there. It's going to ask you for a coupon code. And when you do that, INL50, that's going to give you a $50 discount on whatever you're purchasing there, okay? So just keep that in mind. Don't want to waste time on this because we're dealing with news, but it's, I thought it's important while we're discussing this. The Russian army also with a missile attack disrupted the transportation of weapons of the armed forces of Ukraine to the front there. Uh, that was something that I actually uh, spoke with people in Washington about. Uh, why doesn't Russia just take the tanks out when they're coming in on the train? Wouldn't they have the capability? And they said, yes, 
they do have the capabilities. Now, this was not what happened on this article here on January the 26th. But what I was told is that Russia prefers to allow the tanks to come in because they want culpability. They want accountability. They want to see NATO men and women getting into those tanks and using them so that they can justify their next move. And that means if NATO forces are operating the tanks, like I've already said, their AI technology can detect whether or not it's American troops, British troops, German troops, whoever on the ground, then Russia then will say we are justified in using nuclear force on the United States, Germany, Britain, whatever the case may be, France included. So it's gotten really, really nasty in a hurry. Now, as I told you before already, as it was said to me, that as soon as we get bogged down deeper in this war with Ukraine, China is poised to take Taiwan. And then, of course, I come across this article here. U.S. Air Force General tells officers to prepare for war with China. Uh, yep, you got that right. The memo addressed to all Air Wing Commanders and Air Mobility Command and other Air Force Operational Commanders orders them to report all major efforts to prepare for China fight for Minihan on, by February the 28th. In the memo, Minihan explained that because of both Taiwan and U.S. are due to presidential elections in 2024, the U.S. will be distracted. Chinese President Xi Jinping will have an opportunity to move on Taiwan, he said. Xi's team, reason, and opportunity are all aligned for 2025. Hmm. I think it's going to go down a little bit sooner. If you remember, one of the things I told you guys, oh, oh gosh, over a year ago, Wars are scripted, wars are planned, and I told you then that we would actually see a war with Russia by 2024, right there at the very end of 2023, going into 2024. Putin is supposed to step down. They're going to put in a, a much more hardline leader inside of Russia to be able to do just that, and it's all gearing up. The situation, friends, is gearing up to a point to where it is beyond belief. And then to top all that off, then we have the situation with Iran and Israel. Let's just see if we can get anything going here about uh, Iran and Israel, because like we had the other day, uh, they used that that particular, yeah, we're still, we keep getting knocked off by Twitter. I don't know what the deal is with Twitter, but for some reason, they'll let me get on for a little bit, then bam, I get knocked right back off again with Twitter, and they don't allow me to do anything. Let me just try it from this end here, see if it works there. Um, Iran and Israel because that's the big next step there. All right, great. We actually got in this time here with Iran Israel there. This is where we reported the other day talking about the drones coming in. You got several different footages out there uh, showing that Syrian girl showed it here on her particular uh, broadcast there. Uh, Iran had knocked down two of them. I think it was more of a test. Now, if you remember, too, another thing that happened was Netanyahu, uh, he met with the Jordanian king recently, and I asked about that meeting there uh, with, uh, with the advisor to Israel for the president there uh, about Netanyahu's meeting with, uh, uh, with the uh, king uh, Abdullah there of Jordan. And I was told that that meeting was actually for the purpose of disclosure. Netanyahu vows to uphold Al-Aqsa status quo during surprise visit to Jordan. Hmm, well, I guess a little bit of trade-off is what they're doing there. It's going to hold up the status quo, but he was actually sent there to let the, the uh, he was sent there to be able to tell about, um, the situation with Iran that Israel is about to strike Iran and they're going to be sending missiles from Israel over the Jordanian territory to strike Iran. So they're doing a disclosure to their neighbors right now of what's coming. And that is something that's very common, especially if you remember the situation that happened, George Bush and the allies there before they attacked Iraq, they were getting together with all of their allies in the Middle East to let them know, by the way, we're fixing to do a war with Iraq. Really doesn't have anything to do with 9-11, but we're going to do it anyway. Remember that? Mm, very interesting. All right, let's see, guys. Boy, there's so much going on. It's not even funny here. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, 
Yes, 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 yes. I've already covered a lot of this information there. The problem is, too, that has been told to me there is that us being able to handle three fronts at one time is just absolutely insane. Uh, but Biden has committed to be able to stand with Israel. They have committed to do a first strike. As you know, the United States was already there doing drills inside of um, inside of the country uh, of Israel just recently. And... Um, and so it's just not looking good at all. Um, and, and of course, you know, I was also told that Russia still has a very strong grudge against Germany after World War II. And all the German or Russian soldiers that were killed, some 10 million. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why I was not surprised about it. Also, too, if you remember Zelensky. Uh, let me just kind of, let's pull Zelensky's little face up here for uh, Ukraine there. Zelensky, as I told you, uh, was caught by the Interior Ministry for for selling wep or, sell, or taking weapons and selling weapons um, to um, let's get a photo up here so we can just have a face to go with this guy here uh, the Zelensky there there we go right there that the government or that he had gotten caught selling weapons. Uh, that the United States was shipping in there on the black market. So I really was curious, though, who in the world is he selling them to? Well, guess what? It's actually Turkey that's buying them from Zelensky. So U.S.-made weapons being sold on the black market by Zelensky over there to Turkey. And, of course, the, uh, the Interior Ministry caught him. Uh, that plane was shot down uh, for, for, you know, for, for even daring to challenge Zelensky there. And uh, we'll just kind of pull that back up there. Um, and a uh, uh, helicopter was shot down there, if you guys remember that there. Uh, oh, goodness, let's just see if we can't pop up. And I may have got, got, got words all misspelled and everything. There we go there. Well, it's not showing the actual helicopter that went down. Uh, but that, oh, there it is right there. That's some of the footage from it there when that helicopter went down there. The Interior Ministry killed during that. And that was because they had told Zelensky, either you're going to fork up some of the money there or we're going to expose the fact that you have done this. Well, guess what? lot of corruption, as I've been told, mafia-style corruption going on in the country there. Let me just see if I got anything else. Also, too, I was told that Russia will not buy drones from Turkey, even though Turkey is considered the number one maker of drones. But Russia doesn't trust their quality, uh, that they that they have an inferior uh, product. Uh, that was another thing. And then the other thing, too, I wanted to bring out real quick, too, and that is that uh, AI. That is a major issue going on in this war right now. AI. China. Uh, is the number one leader uh, in AI militarily. But China, unlike the United States, even though we have safeguards with the uh, AI, China does not. And uh, I'm actually going to go into that over on our Patreon channel a little bit deeper. And the reason being is I'm going to be telling you a little bit about something that Linda Moulton Howe had uh, revealed that they have tried to debunk that I got confirmation really is true. Uh, so I got a couple of videos there we're going to be trying to share there with you. I got a dump from Israeli intelligence on Biden and Hunter Biden. Uh, I don't know what to think about the information, but I want to share that with you on our Patreon channel. So definitely join us over on Patreon. The link will be in the description below. I still have all these biblical references up. I'm uh, going to be getting into even to the two witnesses, things like that. A uh, lot of information there. Still be working on here the next couple of days there, but I've been trying to put all this intel together for you to share this broadcast with you now. We want to thank you for listening. Thank you for your support of Israeli News Live. Don't forget our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org there. And I uh, actually need to get to writing art articles. Now that I'm writing in the book, maybe I can share some uh, insights from the book here on uh, our IsraeliNewsLive.org website. And I know that Yana is talking about writing there as well. And don't forget her channel there uh, that she has. I'll try to remember to put the link in there for you. Odyssey, where Yana is, uh, she'll actually be doing, I think, a video tomorrow on her channel, Odyssey. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.